Welcome friends to Muskrat Lynx. Today we are indoors and we are gonna be doing the USGA 2023 rules quiz. It's gonna be a ton of fun. I haven't played competitive golf in a long time, not since high school, which was what, like 12 years ago or something like that? So this is gonna be a doozy. I hope you guys will play along with me. Take some time now, go grab a pen and paper so you can write down your answers to these questions and we will see how we both did at the very end. Today we're gonna be doing a 10 question easy quiz and a 10 question advanced quiz to see how we do. I'm excited, I hope you guys are too. Let's jump in and start the quiz. Also, while you're grabbing that pen and paper, be sure to check and make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We've got tons of cool content here on Muskrat Links. I wouldn't want any of you guys to miss it. We've been doing great with the subscribers lately. Keep spreading the word about what we got going on on this channel. The Sim League is gonna be starting very soon here, hopefully right around Christmas. We'll definitely do a Muskrat Links Christmas special, but then hopefully we can jump right into the Sim League. So stay tuned for that, it is going to be fire. All right, let's see how we do on this quiz. Beginner level first. We're gonna do 10 questions. Let's just jump right into it here. I'm hoping to get, let's say eight out of 10. Eight out of 10 seems like a reasonable amount to get, right? Sand and loose soil are loose impediments on the putting green, but nowhere else. Hmm, that's a good question. I would say that's true. I feel like if there was a mound of soil near my ball, I wouldn't be able to move it in the fairway. So I'm gonna say true. In match play, a player removes an immovable obstruction affecting the line of play of their opponent who had requested that player not do so. What is the ruling? I think it's going to be the player gets the general penalty. Immovable obstruction, he moved it. The opponent said not to move it. I think the player gets the penalty here. A player's ball comes to rest on another part of the course and beyond a public road that is defined as out of bounds. What is the ruling? Oh, that's an interesting one. So it sounds like there's like, you know, a road dividing the course or something like that, but it actually horseshoes around back to the other side of the road and they've hit the ball over the road, clearing the out of bounds stake where it's marked as out of bounds. And then it's hit the course again on the other side of the out of bounds area. Ooh, that is a tough one. So our options are the committee must decide the ball lies out of bounds since it crossed a public road that is out of bounds, or the ball remains in play unless a ro local rule specifies otherwise. I think it's the last one, you know. I don't know, I mean, it's not resting out of bounds currently, and I don't think out of bounds extends indefinitely once you get past the stakes. I feel like it, it could come back in bounds. So I'm gonna say the ball remains in play unless a local rule specifies otherwise. A player must not deliberately apply any substance to a ball to change its playing characteristics during the round. There is a penalty for doing so. Seems like there should be a penalty, right? I mean, you can't like grease your ball during the round and have it be cool, right? Surely that's a penalty. I'm going with it. Stance is the position of a player's feet but not body in preparing or making a stroke. So this is more of a definition type thing here. Stance is the position of a player's feet, but not body. That is tough. I'm trying to think of areas where that would apply. So maybe like, say when you're taking a drop or something from a cart path, so you get relief from your stance. I feel like stance counts the body as well. Cause if you're getting say like a free drop from something, maybe it's not necessarily cart path since that doesn't make sense in this situation that I'm about to describe. But maybe there's like something in your backswing, like say a, uh, like a TV tower or something like that, that would affect your backswing. So you could get relief from your feet, but if it's still like hitting your back or something like that, it would hit your arms, you're still entitled to more relief. So I think the stance uh, encompasses the entire body of the golfer. That's what I'm gonna go with here. Everyone's probably laughing it up in the comments here. Um, so stance is the position of play as feet, but not body in preparing. So I think that's false. I think the body also counts as your stance. We'll see. Objects used for care of the course, such as rakes, are equipment only while they are being held or carried by the player or caddy. So this would be like if you hit your equipment, does the rake count as equipment while someone's holding it still? These, these are beginner questions, by the way, guys. I don't know about you, but these are hard. Oh my gosh, the hard questions are gonna be a doozy. Seems false, I'm gonna go with false. Maybe they're equipment all the time. Or they're equipment none of the time. Either way, false is the right answer, so I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> 
Question seven, players on a side may share clubs, no more than 14, in either foursomes or four ball play. I am relatively confident on this one, more so than any others, that this is completely false. You can never share clubs in any sort of legalized play, of course. You know, when you're going out with your buddies, of course you can share clubs. But any sort of like legal competitive play, I don't think you can share any clubs. You're allowed to share balls though. So most golf courses have a, well, some golf courses and tournaments will have a one ball rule in effect, which means you have to play the same make and model golf ball throughout the whole round. But if you run out of balls and your playing partner or someone else on the course even has that exact model, make and model ball, they can give you the ball and that's fine. I think I read that online recently on one of the websites, but so this one I'm fairly confident on, you cannot ever share clubs. False. The flag stick is a movable pole that is placed in the hole to show players where the hole is. As the term flag stick is used in the rules, it includes any flag if attached. So I think they're talking about the fabric on the flag itself versus the flag stick. Uh, as the term flag stick is used in the rules, it includes any flag if attached. Because I think you can have like a sign post or like a basket or something else on top of the flag stick to indicate where the hole is. It doesn't have to be a fabric flag. Um, so I'm going to say it's all part of the flag stick, flag and any other top are included. All right, two questions to go here guys on the easy one before we move on. Any person, including another player, except the player or their caddy or the player's partner or opponent or any of their caddies is an outside influence. Okay, so this is deciding what an outside influence is. I feel like an opponent would count as an outside influence, so it's kind of weird that that's been thrown in there, and, and their caddies as well. I don't know about playing partners counting as an outside influence or their caddies. I think I'm going to say false on this one. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think I'm going to say false on this one because this exception list I feel like should be smaller and that's my reasoning there. Guys, we're going to get like 3 out of 10. This is going to be really embarrassing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Last question of the easy ones. The result of a match becomes final in the way stated by the committee, which should be in the terms of the competition. Is that even a question? It's a statement. Well, well I guess that makes sense because we're determining if it's true or false. Uh, anyway. The result of a match becomes final in the way stated by the committee, which should be in the terms of the competition. What a weird question. I, this is tricky, but it feels like a true statement. It feels like some bylaw where it's like defining how a result actually stands, and this feels kosher to me, so I'm gonna say true. Okay guys, that is the last question. How do you think we did so far? Did you have wildly different answers than I did? Uh, you probably did. So again, let me know down in the comments below what you're about to get here because I got a <laughs> five out of 10 correct. That is not what we want to see for the easy quiz. Okay, let's go through and see what we got wrong because that is atrocious. Question one, apparently the loose sand and soil well, I guess it's sand and loose soil, loose impediments. I guess it all counts no matter where you are, apparently. We got this one right with the immovable obstruction. We got this one right. Oh, that was the one where you crossed over the road but back into the course. I'm glad I got that one right because I kind of worked through that one in my head. It felt like a good one to get right. Uh, this one we got wrong. Substances can be used to clean the ball. Okay, so certain substances are allowed, but probably other substances aren't. That was more like a trick question. I got tricked into thinking you were like doctoring the ball somehow. So, okay, that one's fair. I understand that. Stance. Okay, we got that one right as well. It seems like the ones we're getting right are the ones we actually took the time to think through. Maybe there's a pattern here. Uh, objects used in the care of the course, the rakes, that was just a tricky one. I don't know about that one. So I guess that is true in terms of listing them as equipment while they are being held or carried by the player or caddy. All right, fair enough. Wait, what? This is the one I thought we were guaranteed to get right. Are you kidding me? Players may share clubs in either foursomes or four ball play no more than 14. Okay. Again, you guys probably were laughing at me in the comments on that one, but that seems questionable to me. We're going to have to go back and get a ruling on this one. And by ruling, I mean the USGA website, which we're on here, so the ruling is already confirmed. Okay, moving on.
The flag stick is a movable pole. Okay, so we got the flag stick flag basket one correct that I was talking about. So this one is actually true, the outside influence one. So that list was a complete list of all the influences versus outside influences. So I guess that one is true. And on the last one, we did get it correct, the whole committee terms of the competition declaring it final. Okay, that did not go as planned. Let me know down in the comments what you guys got, but let's jump back in here and try the advanced mode. I don't know why we're going up to the advanced mode since we just did so poorly on the beginner mode, but hey, let's ramp it up. Maybe these will be more obscure, which makes me have heard of them more because I know more weird rules than normal rules. I'm waffling here. Let's just jump right into the advanced quiz and see how we do. Oh God, these questions are a lot longer. <laughs> let's see if we can get through them. With respect to match play, which one of the following is true? Ooh. I think you are allowed to concede while the ball's in motion. So that one feels true to me. A player may concede a hole at any time prior to the start or conclusion of the hole. That feels true as well, though. Is there a time when you can't concede? I feel like it's B on this one. That feels like the most possibly true. So we're going to go with that, even though this is, this is my second guess right here. In a match, a player has given wrong information regarding the number of strokes taken on a hole, resulting in a loss of hole penalty in which of the following? So basically, you've lied to your opponent and it's going to cost you the hole in what scenario? Okay, I've read through them all. I want to say it's the bottom one because this seems like deliberate lying to take an advantage. The only question is making their next stroke. Maybe it's something that would apply at the very end of the hole and not necessarily when they made the stroke, but this feels like deliberate lying. So I'm gonna say this is where you would lose the hole in match play. Again, I don't play much match play at all. So in fact, I don't think I've ever played a competitive match play match for golf. So we'll just go with that one. Question number three, which one of the following is false regarding rule 16.3, the embedded ball? With no local rule in place, a player is not entitled to relief for a ball which is embedded in its own pitch mark in grass in the rough. A player whose ball is known to have rolled into a pitch mark made by a previous player's ball is not entitled to relief. A player whose ball is embedded in its own pitch mark in the fairway and whose stance is in temporary water may take relief from either the temporary water or the embedded ball at their, uh, at their option. A player may not take relief for a ball which is embedded in its own pitch mark in a sandy area that is in the rough. Okay, so we're looking for the false statement on this one. Let's see. I think it's the temporary water one. We're going to go with that one because, well, it says at their option, you can either take relief via the temporary water situation or the embedded ball situation. Uh, I feel like I'm just going to be second guessing myself this whole quiz, but we're going to go with C on this one and just move it on. Guys, let me know what you think of this quiz because this is super hard. These questions are very, very specific. Which one of the following is not correct when a player is putting a ball into play at the point where the previous stroke was made? Okay, so I feel like this is true. No one's going to dictate how high you tee up the ball in the teeing area. And I think uh, you can tee it up wherever you want. You don't have to tee up in your exact tee hole from before. So I think these are true. So which one of these is true? Is it the nearest area or do you get a club length? I think it's near as possible. I don't think you get a club length. I think you just drop it as close to as possible where you remember it last was. So let's go with B. Oh wait, which of the following is not correct? Yeah, so we're going with C. I think the club length is the incorrect one. So that's what we're going with. All right, question five. Nice short one, I like it. On the putting green, a player accidentally bumps their ball and moves it when making a practice stroke. What is the ruling? Ooh, they get no penalty and must play the ball as it lies. Okay, it's definitely not that. They get no penalty and must replace the ball. Could be. They get one penalty stroke and must replace the ball. Could be. They get the general penalty and in stroke play must play the ball as it lies. No, you're definitely not playing the ball as it lies in this situation. You don't get to play it from wherever you miss hit it. So you're definitely replacing the ball. The question is, is it a penalty or not? So I remember back in one of the PJ Tour events, either last year or the year before, someone took a practice swing on a tee box, toe shanked it into the crowd, and it was fine. I'm pretty sure he didn't get a penalty. He just got to re-tee it because it, he wasn't making a legitimate stroke at the ball. He wasn't trying to hit the ball. It got mishit as a result, and it was no penalty. I'm basing my logic on that logic. It might be different on the putting green for sure. 
So I'm gonna go with no penalty and replace the ball on this one. It's an edgy decision, but that's what I'm going with. Question six, halfway through. In four ball match play, player A and player B are partners. A holds out in four strokes, B lies two on the fringe of the putting green. Both their opponents, C and D, have holed out in four strokes. While B plays their stroke from the fringe in the general area, A's caddy stands on an extension of the line of play behind B's ball to block distractions. B holds their third stroke. What is the ruling? Okay, I understand what's happening here, but this is a crazy ruling. So I feel like a lot of the stance and placement of things is based on intent. Like I know there's a rule where you can park your golf cart nearby and if the shadow happens to block the sun, like if the cart blocks the sun on accident, I'm pretty sure that's fine. But if you're like, hey, move my cart over there to block the sun, I don't want it in my eyes on the shot, I'm pretty sure that's a penalty. And in this case, B's caddy or whoever it is, A's caddy, stands on an extension of the line of play behind B's ball to block distractions. So it seems like there is an intention to block things here so I'm gonna say like B gets disqualified or something, and that means the hole is tied because A has already holed out for four and C and D who are on a team have also holed out for four because it's four ball match play. So I think the hole is tied here based on the intention of the caddy. Five head play. In four ball stroke play, A and B are partners. On the 13th hole, B accidentally chips A's ball from just short of the putting green. A sees how the ball rolls to the hole. A realizes the mistake before playing B's ball. What is the ruling? These are crazy. Guys, I can't think of these situations. These are nuts. All right, so let's kind of edge these out here a little bit more. So we've got B being penalized too, or B being disqualified. What do we think it is? I don't know. I'm gonna go with my gut again on the intention thing and say it's just a penalty because it was accidental. So I'm gonna stick with A and B here for the answers. So the question now is, A gets no penalty. It must place a ball from the spot. A gets two penalty strokes since they were helped by B's play and must place a ball on the spot from which B hit A's ball because he saw the line of the chip when B took it. Is that some sort of penalty? I'm gonna say no. I guess I'm picking the most lenient option here. Maybe that's wrong because the rules of golf typically are not lenient. But I'm gonna go with A here. I'm gonna say B gets penalized too, A gets no penalty, even though the line helped him when B hit his ball. So again, you guys are probably laughing it up in the comments, but this is a person who's 12 years out of competitive golf. All right, three questions to go. Let's see how we do, let's rein these in. Okay, so this next one is like a complete this sentence thing. So here we go. The putting green is all ground of the hole being played, which is specially prepared for putting within 20 yards of the hole within 20 yards of the hole and not in a bunker, cut to fringe height or less. This one sort of jumps out at me as definitely D. I don't know how you define what specially prepared for putting means. Seems like there's some interpretation there. Within 20 yards of the hole, that doesn't seem right because you could be just off the putting green and be in the rough and certainly still be within 20 yards of the hole. So this seems like garbage in the middle here to me. I'm gonna go with cut to fringe height or less and just cross my fingers that I'm not being stupid. A stroke play club championship was scheduled over three consecutive days. All right, this already sounds way too specific. The committee has not provided in the terms of the competition any special provisions regarding practice. On the evening after the second round, a player played three holes at the club on the competition course with their daughter. Which of the following is true? The player gets no penalty. The player gets two penalty strokes applied to the first hole of their third round. The player gets a total of six penalty strokes applied to the first hole score of their third round score. The player is disqualified from the club championship. Again, feels like I'm picking a lenient option here, but it seems like if there's no rules against practice, there should be no penalty, right? Unless there's some built-in rule deep in there that says you definitely can't. Feels like no penalty to me. So again, I'm picking leniency, which just feels wrong. But if you want to go out after and play some more holes, feel free to do it in my opinion. And that's why I'm not in charge of the rules of golf. Last question, everybody. Hope you're writing down your answers as we are about to see how this panned out. In-stroke play, player's tee shot 
deflects off a maintenance cart and it goes into a red penalty area 10 yards to the left. The player drops a ball at the spot where the ball deflected off the cart and completes the hole in four more strokes. Okay. They tee off on the next hole. What is the player's score for the hole? So it sounds like an illegal drop because I'm fairly certain in this scenario where if you hit the cart and it goes into the red stakes, you're just in the red stakes and tough beans. Again, that could be a wrong assumption, but that's what I'm starting with. So they dropped it at the cart, which is 10 yards to the right of where their ball went into the hazard. So they've not moved any closer to the hole, allegedly by this question. So there's no penalty for taking it like way too close. I think the only penalty here is basically taking an illegal drop outside of your two club lengths where you'd be dropping by the red stakes. So I'm gonna guess that's a two stroke penalty and I'm gonna say he gets a seven on this hole. That is my conclusion. Okay, that is all 10 questions, guys, on the advanced mode. Are we gonna do better or worse than the basic quiz? I hope I do better, but again, that seems kind of backwards, so. All right, here we go. Drum roll, please. Oh, we got six of them right. We're actually better at the advanced questions than we are at the easy ones. Oh, guys, let me know how you did as we scroll through these. I'm really curious to see what you guys thought of some of these questions. Let's just run through them real quick and end this video off. So the match play one, we got it correct, actually. You can concede at any time prior to the start or conclusion of the hole. Cool. All right, we got it right. I think we talked through this one pretty well, saying it was more or less a direct lie that kind of altered the outcome of how the person played the hole, and that was the most wrong, so we were correct there. All right, this is the embedded ball one. Okay, so the correct answer was, with no local rule in place, a player is not entitled to relief for a ball which is embedded in its own pitch mark. I think I read that wrong. I think I said I thought they were entitled. I feel like that one's on me for not reading that correctly because I feel like that one I would have got right if I had read it and not just thought, okay, never mind. I was just moving too fast. That's YouTube recording for you. All right, next one. We got it wrong. When returning to a location that is in general area, the player must drop the ball near as possible. Is that what I said? Oh, no. Okay, so you do get the club length. Oh, and we parsed through this one correctly as well. You get no penalty and replace the ball if you accidentally hit it on what is a clear practice stroke while putting. All right, good. See, rules came in there. Specific situations. And in this one, oh, this was the fringe chippy thing with the, uh, the caddy. Okay, we got it right. Again, we thought it through. The caddy had intent to change things and the hole is tied. That guy's score does not count. Nice. Uh, we're correct on this one. Leniency wins again. I guess that bodes well for the future question where we talk about the practice after the, the round in the tournament play. Okay. Oh, okay. So this one, again, this is some special thing that's listed in the rules about the area being specifically prepared for putting. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense because maybe you've cut some other area lower than the fringe, so that doesn't really count as the putting green. I, I, whatever, I can live with that answer being wrong. Yes, and we were right on this question as well. You get no penalty for playing a little bit after the round on the same course because there's nothing in the rules that says you can't. Nice. And the last one we got wrong, so the correct answer was eight. So it would have been three penalty strokes. Interesting. I wonder what the other penalty stroke would have been there. That is it for this quiz, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed something a little bit different here on the channel. We're probably going to be doing some like ball testing stuff in the simulator or club testing over the next couple weeks. It's going to be super exciting. I hope you guys are subscribed to the channel because we've got tons of fun stuff here coming up on Muskrat Links. But I think that's going to be it for me. Have fun out there, everyone.